Britain. As the coronavirus continues to spread across China, other nations around the world are starting to increase their precautions. Just a short while ago, British Airways said it was suspending all flights to and from mainland China. That comes after the British government advised against all but essential travel to China. And Indonesia's Lion Air has also just said it's suspending its flights. Other airlines, including United Airlines, Air Canada and Cathay Pacific Airways, have cancelled some flights to China, although in some cases it is because of a lack of demand. Here's travel journalist Simon Calder. Flights went out uh, normally to Beijing to Shanghai yesterday. They are now on their way back. The flight from uh, Beijing due in at three o'clock at uh, Heathrow this afternoon. The flight from Shanghai slightly behind it. Um, they're both over Siberia at the moment. They will have all the normal passengers who were booked on those flights, but they will also have, crucially, the crew who flew out yesterday. And everybody else who was booked on uh, flights from tomorrow onwards from Beijing and Shanghai will now be trying to find alternative routes. Well, the official figures from China show how the virus is continuing to spread. The number of confirmed fatalities rose by 26 to 132 as of Wednesday morning. Almost all of those deaths are in Hubei province, where the virus was first discovered. And there was also a sharp increase in the number of confirmed infections, up by almost a third to stand at just under 6,000. Well, here's what the Chinese officials had to say at a news conference in Beijing just a short time ago. We are now in the critical period of the uh, prevention of this epidemic. We need to control the potential source of virus. Yes, recently we do have people travel from Hubei to Fengzhuang area. And in other communities, we also have the similar travelers from Wuhan. And also we actually have the registration and management of those people who travel from Wuhan or from the uh, Hubei province. And we ask them to stay at home for the 14 days quarantine. Let's go live now to Robin Brandt, who's in Shanghai. Robin, welcome to you. With the authorities calling this now at a critical stage, what's your assessment of how they view this crisis as being at? Well, on the one hand, we have a, a country that's certainly around Wuhan, the epicenter city and the surrounding province of Hubei, essentially a lockdown involving millions of millions of people. On the other hand, we have international uh, governments seeking to remove their people from that city. At the same time, airline companies uh, restricting, uh, some of them are going even further and completely suspending flights uh, in and out of the country. They say that's because they need to protect their passengers and their staff, but also, as I think you've alluded to, obviously the demand for uh, seats on flights now, given the change in advice in the US, the change in the UK is going to absolutely uh, plummet. President Xi Jinping yesterday, uh, the man who has said he is in charge of directing personally the response to this, described this outbreak of coronavirus uh, as a devil. They are throwing everything they have at it in terms of logistics, something, of course, by the nature of the authoritarian Communist Party controlled government here, they can do uh, very well. Thousands of military personnel, uh, doctors, a huge amount of money being sent in to try and assist as well. Uh, but at the same time, the effort is to try and stop uh, the spread and just contain this virus. And the most effective way of doing that in recent days has essentially been to tell everyone not to return to work, not to return to school. They've postponed the end of China's Lunar New Year Festival. That's because the prospect of tens of millions of people crisscrossing the country over the coming days and this, what that could do for spreading the diseases, frankly, just adds to the nightmare scenario. OK, Robin Brandt in Shanghai for now. Thank you. Well, the race is on to find a way of immunising people from the virus and there has been a development in Australia. Scientists have been able to replicate it in a laboratory. Here's the team who did it on what that might mean. Yeah, it, it all feeds into the global health response and the pub yeah. for a public health initiative and it's a really important component in that because no virus has appeared to come out of China yet and it appears that other people have had difficulty growing. Um, I guess when we provide the virus to others who will bring their expertise to it, that will mean that, if you like, the cycle time on what they can do will be short. Well, Australia has also announced that it will quarantine suspected cases on Christmas Island, which is better known for being the place which houses migrants while their claims to stay in Australia are assessed. Let's go live now to Sydney and our correspondent Shima Khalil. Shima, welcome to you. What's reaction there been to uh, these people being quarantined on Christmas Island? 
Well, I think the initial reaction was one of relief that people are being evacuated and brought back to Australia. But really, the choice of Christmas Island has raised eyebrows and raised a number of questions. As you mentioned there, Samantha, Christmas Island has quite a tainted history, if you will. Since 2003, it's been used as a detention center, a place where asylum seekers are kept and detained. It is famous for a recently reopened particular detention center that has recently been criticized for uh, bad conditions, for human rights violations. It's currently housing a Sri Lankan family of four. This detention center is going to be quarantine zone, uh, if you will. And upon hearing that, many have uh, raised the question of why is it that 600 Australians, including 100 children that traveled with their families to celebrate the Lunar Year, instead of being brought to hospitals in mainland China, why are they being uh, brought to Christmas Island about 2,000 kilometers from the mainland? It's actually closer to Indonesia than it is to Australia mainland. Uh, the other thing is, is it... If it's a place that's been criticized for bad conditions in the past, why is it suddenly deemed okay for people to be there to be quarantined for 14 days? Is there going to be adequate, um, adequate gar guards, adequate medical facilities? All of these are questions that the Prime Minister has not answered. And also, inside Christmas Island themselves, we've heard from the authorities who've uh, told local media that the first they heard about is from was from the media when the Prime Minister uh, announced it. So, in principle, there is a sense of the relief that Australians are coming back, but the place that they're going to go to when they do come back is quite problematic. Okay, Pshayma Khalil, for now, thank you.